Thank you, Philippe. So I have 20, 20 minutes just to talk about uh, mm, techniques, as I showed you yesterday. Uh, so, OK, this is my uh, disclosure. So right, let's go so immediately. Remove that. Um, remove it. When you go okay. into So this is the conjoint add-on, I think. Oh, sorry. Could you so close you the, cut the sound, please, of my movie? Yes, thank you. So this is the anterior part, the shoulder. And uh, this is the, on the right, the pec major. You try to go under the pec major, and you try to see where is the conjoint tendon. The conjoint tendon is this uh, long and white structure on your left, and you try to go under the conjoint tendon. In, in that dissection, it was a little difficult because I was not into the good plan. But when you go under the conjoint tendon, immediately you will see something fat, something yellow. That is the royal nerve, of course, and you have to take care. But you go in this, uh, in this part, and uh, step by step, you go progressively, and the white and flat structure uh, the, is the lat dorsi. And I am cutting about one centimeter of the pec major. It is the sternocostal uh, tendon. Uh, why? Because it is on my way, and it's not possible for me to make a nice dissection. So when you release the upper part of the pec major, it is exactly like for uh, uh, for the shoulder prosthesis, in fact, uh, you, this is not a, a big problem. So now you have to go and to prepare the, this space. And uh, in fact, you are not from lateral to medial. You are from anterior to posterior. And this is very, very important to understand. I am here at the upper part of the lat dorsi. On the left, you will see the uh, subscap and the three sisters. And uh, it's little hazardous there because you have the axillary vessels with the axillary nerve. So please take care. And we are going to see very quickly now the junction between the lat dorsi and the teres major. So you continue. We are here at the distal part and onto this is the shaft of the humerus. You are at the distal part of the tendon. And step by step, you try to, to isolate it, uh, to isolate uh, the true age of the lat dorsi. And this is the royal nerve, the yellow. You try to, to make a very smooth and gentle dissection because uh, this royal nerve, in fact, gives some divisions to the long head of the triceps. But as soon as you are beyond the royal nerve, you have no risk because, in fact, you, you are going again from anterior to posterior dissection. You're not really medial, and the brachial plexus is really anterior and superior. So, as you know, with my probe, with my little cautery, I try to make my dissection, but you can see here uh, a branch to the radial nerve, and with uh, cautery, you can create some contractions, and it's sometimes <coughs> hazardous. You have to, to take it and to make it with a probe, a very gentle probe, just to retract or to lift up a little, a little uh, this radial nerve. So, as soon as you have decided that you are at the distal part, this is the proximal part. The, you can see the, the, the lat dorsi is white. And just behind the lat dorsi, you have something red, which is the muscle belly of the, uh, of the uh, teres major. And as it is a conjoint tendon, it's very difficult to separate them. And uh, you have to, to make this dissection, and uh, it's not so easy. Another point is that the lat dorsi is very thin, so with your electrical cautery, it's very easy to, 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 to damage it, and you have to take care about that. And you can see here the radial nerve, not all the radial nerve, but you have some vessels there to try to, uh, to, to control because you can have some bleeding. This is a, a big one on the right, a smaller one on the, on, on the, on the left. And this is the distal part of the, of, um, of the lat dorsi. So you continue and you try to, to isolate uh, this lat dorsi. And then you, you, you release the lat dorsi from the bone uh, as a transversal section. And you are uh, very rapidly, now very quickly, onto the shaft of the uh, humerus. And then you go from the distal to the proximal. You detach uh, the lat dorsi. This lat dorsi is very thin, in fact, and uh, just it's a uh, at this point, it's a very easy dissection. And just at this point, uh, you can understand exactly what is the lat dorsi. And under, there is an anatomical uh, plan of dissection. And uh, it's very easy. 
uh, at the very beginning of uh, insertion onto the bone to separate both tendons. So you really is about one centimeter at the distal part of the tendon, but of course you don't have to cut everything now because it will be now the sewing time, if you, you will have to harvest it. And this is the very thin and flat lat dorsi. As you can see, it's like a paper. And uh, you have to think to, to find this, this plan of dissection. And just under, you have a terrace major. So now, uh, this is probably the most demanding step because you have to harvest it. And be careful with a needle, as there is the radial nerve just up uh, to that. And I, I, take, I took a time to understand how to harvest it. And I, as I show you now, I make a triple crack of suture. Uh, and why it's difficult? Because the direction is never perfect, but it's making easier after tenotomy of a pec major. And uh, you take uh, uh, the sutures, and it's very important to make a crack of suture because otherwise you will have, you can rupture your transfer, and uh, it's very important. It's so thin and so easy to make it uh, with an open procedure. Arthroscopically, you can become crazy. And in fact, as you, you can see with my uh, assistants, with my sisters, uh, it's a four-hand uh, step. And uh, you, you look for the different uh, uh, loops. And after a triple passage, this is done. And it is the distal part of a tendon. So as you, you, you should know now, I've stopped the tunnel. I stopped the tubalization of my tendon because I had a lot of rupture into the bone, and I wanted now to fix it flat onto the footprint of a subscap. So because of that, I have to harvest uh, both the distal edge of the lat dorsi and after the proximal edge. And you can see with this green suture, we uh, are still at the distal part of the tendon. But this time in, in the real life, you need about 20 minutes just, just, just for that, but really it is the main point and the most demanding point. So um, now after that, you continue the tenotomy of uh, uh, lat dorsi, which is there, and don't cut in that indication, don't cut the teres major, which is just behind, of course. Uh, at this step is very easy, but the, the connections uh, will become closer and more difficult to to understand at the medial part of the tendon. So now we have a, a, the upper part of the lat dorsi. And as you can see, I will make the same with a blue suture. So this is very, very hazardous because you remember the upper part close to the subscap, you have the axillary and uh, circumflex vessels. So uh, with the nerve, and you have to, to go very slowly, step by step. So it is exactly the same technique with a triple crack of Shooter, and you make a loop, and uh, you have to to manage it. The, the most difficult, I think, is to take care about uh, the vessel around. Uh, you can see behind the, the red muscle, this is the teres major. So you can see perfectly the limit between the lat dorsi, which is still fixed uh, at the upper part of uh, of the his tendon onto the humerus. And because otherwise, you will have a retraction, and it will be more difficult to manage this step will be more difficult to manage. Then uh, you, you try to, to, to take only the lat dorsi, not, of course, the teres major. But uh, maybe you know that uh, this is for the anterior transfer onto the subscap. So I just take uh, the lat dorsi isolate. But uh, when I make a transfer to the posterior part of the cuff, I prefer to uh, harvest both lat dorsi plus, plus the teres major because it's easier. So this is really the point of the technique. We have to separate lat dorsi from uh, the teres major. And uh, you, you have to go very slowly uh, because uh, it's, uh, it's really a thin tendon. And uh, it's really a thin tendon. And uh, you have to, to, to be prudent because you can damage it. Or if you miss this step, of course, after when you will make your transfer, you will you will rupture your tendon, and uh, the game, uh, unfortunately, will be over. The game will be over. So, uh, last last point. You see, we are 
for this step, I, I decided to, to, to give you the picture, the native picture, the native movie, because uh, I insist on, to, on this fact that it is a very uh, demanding step, but if you make it perfectly, um, you will have uh, everything after will become easier. So this is the, the last one, and uh, if you've done uh, previously, if you have performed lat dorsi transfer, you know that the length of the tendon is about seven centimeters, but the, the width, the width of the tendon is about uh, three centimeters uh, at minimum, and it's uh, you can have something very flat. But uh, the managing management of these different structures uh, was very difficult for me to learn, and this is the reason why I show you now the things. So now. The harvesting is done, and you have to cut all the lat dorsi. And probably the lat dorsi will retract itself, not medially again, but posteriorly back to the shoulder. You remember that the lat dorsi is a, is a posterior muscle. It's not an anterior muscle. It's not a medial muscle. So, uh, but the retraction is not really significant at this point. Why? Because again, again, you are some connections between the teres major, and you have to release that, because if you do not release that, the lot dorsi will not be able to, to be mobilized enough to reach uh, the subscap, uh, the footprint of the subscap. So you can see uh, at the distal part of the movie, this is the muscle belly of the teres major, and at the upper part, the white, very thin structure is, of course, the lot dorsi. Be careful and take care on the left of your picture, because remember that you still have um, the axillary and circumflex vessels, but now you have to go as deep as possible, and most of the time the limitation you have is the length of your scope or the length of your electrocautery, uh, because uh, you have to go as deep as possible, but sometimes we, 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 I think we, we have to imagine new instruments to go deeper. So now I am trying to go uh, at the distal part of the of a lat dorsi, inferior age. Uh, I, I should say that it is a right shoulder. I'm sorry, I forgot to explain you that it is a right shoulder. So now it is another point as of this point because I am between the, the yellow is the uh, radial nerve and the white is my lat dorsi. I am at the superior and anterior surface of the lat dorsi. You have the radial nerve which is oblique on the right and you have to go over. And to go over, it is very important because you can see here the transversal connections from the lat dorsi, which is sagittal, and the transversal connection, which is here. I am making the dissection. Why? Because this is a nat natural connection between the lat dorsi and uh, the long head of the triceps. If you don't cut that, you will not be able to uh, lift up your tendon. So it is very, very important to understand that. And to understand that there is a 90 degrees orientation between the fibers of the lat dorsi and the fibers of the uh, fibrosis of the, tris, uh, of the mm -hmm. long head of the triceps. And then you continue the, the, the dissection of the, the red muscle is, of course, is, is still is the tris major. And you can see all this connection, this connection, the, the anatomist call this the aponevrosis of the long head of the triceps. So, now you, you, you continue, and uh, on the right you have the lat dorsi, and I forgot to say that with your suture, you can pull up your tendon, and you can mobilize the tendon from back, from, uh, from inferior, from superior, and then you can continue, the, the, the two sutures are up. I pull up my lat dorsi through the skin, and it's very easy to continue the progression in between. And again, you have to go as deep as possible, and now you will see that my probe will be too short. And because of that, I use uh, endoscopic scissors, which is uh, longer. You can see uh, uh, the scissors is the, in the hand of my, of my assistant. And you continue to go as, as deep as possible. And it's possible to go to the scapula. Uh, I think for an anterior transfer of the lat dorsi, it's not necessary, it's not mandatory to release the lat dorsi from the scapula, because my goal is not to reach the upper parts of the, hum of the humerus, but just the anterior part. But uh, 
you can go to the, to the, to the, to the scapula, and then you can see here with my scissors, it's very easy to, to, to retract with one uh, retractor. Of course, you pull with your sutures, and you can mobilize your transfer uh, exactly uh, if you were in an open surgery, and you have to go as deep as possible. And at the upper part of the lap dorsi, take care, because you will find the pedicule of the terrace major first, and uh, secondary, more far away, the pedicule of the lat dorsi. The pedicule of the terrace major is about seven to eight centimeters from the humerus side. On the opposite, the pedicule of the uh, lat dorsi is about 11 to 13 centimeters. So it's very far. Sometimes I look at it, but again, uh, for the anterior transfer of the lat dorsi, I think it's useless to go and to control it. Uh, because you don't have a lot of, you don't need a lot of lens uh, to control everything. But you, you can see it's like microsurgery, how nice is the view. Uh, and you, you just uh, make a normal surgery, but you, have, you are just in the water. Of course, uh, so at this point, there is no any risk because the, the nerve is beyond. Uh, we are about 10 centimeters deep into the shoulder, into the uh, axillary field. And there are, there are no vessels there. If you used to make an open surgery, you can see with your scissors, your finger, with this point, uh, in fact, is, is very easy. So after this release, of course, you have to prepare the way. And uh, the, the lap dorsi is done now. And I am preparing the space just behind the congenital tendon to the footprint of the subscap. Um, and you have to take care because you're, of course, just behind the congenital tendon, and you know that you have, at this, at this way, you have the mus musculocutaneous nerve and you have the axillary nerve. So I am looking for, for the vessels. Here you can see the uh, circumflex <laughs> vessel with a nerve. So you have to cross this area. And of course, this is the reason why Bassem El Hassan from La Mayo uh, uh, have said, and I agree with him, uh, for the anterior an transfer, you don't have to take or to harvest both the lap dorsi and the terrace major because it's too bulky, it's too big, and you can have an impeachment uh, with the uh, axillary vessels. But if you only harvest uh, the um, lap dorsi, at it's a very long and thin tendon, you can reach the footprint of the subscap without any, uh, without any um, impeachment. This is the upper part of the footprint of my uh, subscap. Uh, and you can see here the distal part of the subscap, the humeral head. In that situation, I've tried to make a partial repair of the subscap in addition. So this is the reason why you can see some white sutures and other anchors at the upper part of the subscap. But this is the, the footprint of the subscap. Now you, you pull up your transfer tendon and you control whether it reach, it's able to reach the upper part of the subscap, and now, as you know, I've stopped the tunnel, I've stopped the tubulization because I had some rupture in the turn uh, of the tendon uh, between the, the bone and the, um, and the tendon in, this, in the U-turn, uh, I call this the guillotine effect, and now I prefer to fix it flat. So the blue one, uh, suture, the blue suture is the upper part of a lat dorsi, will, which will be Medial, uh, this is my medial anchor close to the cartilage. I am uh, exactly at the uh, middle, middle aspect of, uh, of the footprint of the subscap. And my, my green suture will be the lateral one. Again, I want my transfer to be, uh, to be flat. And with a second, uh, not less anchor. Now I, I decided to make something easier now. And you, 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 can, you can see as you pull, you can reach very easily uh, the lateral part and your tendon will be flat onto the footprint. So I think we have some, maybe some discussion because Philip will show you the, the pec major transfer. I've done, uh, I've done a lot of pec major. Uh, maybe I can explain why I've switched with this technique. And now you can see I lift up the congenital tendon, and I want to see the impingement between my lat dorsi, which is the uh, and, and the, the axillary 
nerve and vessel. And you can see how close are the two uh, anatomic structures. So this is the reason why you have to control and to release all this uh, area. But, but uh, this is the reason why I think it's not possible to take both the lat dorsi plus the tris major. I think only the lat dorsi is enough. So if you go back into, into the axillary field, you can see the teres major. And in fact, we've just turned and switched the, the lat dorsi from about uh, four or five centimeters from the, its non-natural insertion and the footprint of the subscale. OK, thank you very much.